Welcome to Tech Results Dhamma. In this video, we are going to look into this question. Your data flow is running slow. What steps uh, you will take? Um, so there could be a lot of possibilities. Uh, your data flow in the Azure Data Factory is running slow. So first of all, uh, what we will do, we'll look into the Azure IR setting for the vCores. Uh, so maybe you are uh, uh, loading a file that has maybe 100,000 records and uh, you've been uh, loading just fine. Uh, but now you got a bigger file uh, and that has uh, maybe million records uh, and uh, you have used uh, tons of uh, activities such as lookup, joins, you know, aggregates and all that and now it's taken more time uh, to load them um, so what we need to do uh, I will suggest to you if your data flow is uh, start running slow you always go to the uh, integration runtime here and uh, then uh, in the integration you're gonna go to Azure and uh, here uh, in the Azure uh, you're gonna take a look uh, for the data flow runtime uh, now there are uh, certain things you need to take a look uh, maybe the v cores uh, that is a four plus four uh, uh, you have that very small amount. Uh, so in case uh, your file has grown huge and you're getting more files that you're processing and uh, you might want to switch from the 4 plus 4 to the 8 plus 8. Uh, so total of 16 V cores. Uh, or even if you are here with the 32 plus uh, 16, that's 48 V cores. Uh, you might want to go with the 64 plus uh, 16. Um, just remember that uh, there is a price for uh, this uh, each V core per hour. Uh, so if uh, you are uh, uh, it's a point uh, two seven four uh, cents, uh, so twenty eight cents around, and uh, that that could be you know if you are adding more V cores, and uh, that might actually be beneficial because in, if uh, with the, this uh, V core setting, uh, maybe your data flow is running for uh, thirty minutes, and with this V core, it is running for only ten minutes, uh, so you might actually pay more per V core, but it finish in less time, so you have to test that out. So these you have to play with this all uh, like okay where you stand what is the uh, v core you're using currently and if any has changed uh, then uh, you might want to play and give more power to it uh, uh, now if uh, the scenario is uh, look uh, your number of file or number of record that you are getting from the source did not change uh, so let's go back to the second scenario here um, Check the execution of data flow to find out if the issue is in the source, activity, or the destination. Now, this is also very important. Let's say you run this uh, uh, pipeline and uh, then you go to the monitoring, uh, and uh, in the monitoring, uh, you will be able to see those. Uh, data flow runs uh, and pipeline runs uh, once you click on there you will be able to see the detail uh, how much time a source took uh, how much time your uh, activity took and how much time your destination or sync took uh, so in this case, uh, let's say if you are reading the data from your C Azure SQL database and uh, you're extracting the data, maybe running a store procedure or running a query, and uh, that query is uh, performing very bad uh, and they're taking uh, forever to get the results uh, or get the records from the Azure SQL DB, that could be a problem. Now, there could be other problem with the uh, activities that you're using, maybe look up. Uh, you might want to look, uh, look into the different settings of it. Uh, maybe you are doing some aggregation and uh, you really don't need uh, maybe you are using some ranking and all those activities and those are the ones which are taken time in those ty type of active if the activities are taken uh, time to run it uh, you can't do much about it you might want to be given more power to it that could be one of the solution uh. so let's say you have used uh, four plus four v cores instead of uh, you know shifting or going to the more uh, v cores uh, that could be better idea so you uh, uh, and uh, there's a, there could be a possibility you might have just used auto resolve integration runtime you might want to create a new one where you have more v cores assigned to it um, now if uh, this is happening on destination that's also like okay what type of destination you are using maybe you're using azure sql or uh, sql server and uh, that is the table has grown so huge and insert is taken time or maybe any transaction is holding uh, when you are uh, uh, trying to insert the data so you might, might want to check uh, your destination database systems as well uh, if there is any activity going on while the rewriting is happening uh, um, on the des uh, sync side now these are a uh, couple of things you will check check the IR region um, so let's say you are reading the data from uh, Azure blob storage or ADLS uh, uh, gen 2 that's in uh, North America region and you are using IR uh, that's uh, in uh, 
uh, maybe in Asia. So do you want to consider that? Uh, uh, it's a good idea to have the compute uh, and uh, uh, the sources uh, in the same region. Um, so here, if you notice here, uh, if I go back here in settings, uh, I'm saying auto resolve. If I'm not, um, if I'm not using auto resolve, so maybe my I'm using Canada, uh, let's say Central US, uh, and my all the sources are in different region. Uh, you know that might be also playing a role here. So I would like to create the IR in the same region where my source and destination or source of sinks uh, exist. Uh, so that's one of the things you also want to consider that. Uh, Let's go to the next step. Uh, check uh, if general purpose or memory optimized compute type is used. Uh, so here uh, in the your IR, uh, you notice here if I go to data flows here, there are two compute types. Uh, there's general purpose and there is a memory optimizer. So if uh, you are you know, using activities, very normal activities, that's really it doesn't really need a whole lot of memory. You will be fine with general purpose, uh, but uh, everything comes with the testing. So I don't know if uh, you are using general purpose with the uh, 32 plus 40, uh, 16. Uh, uh, v cores, um, it may be it's taking you 10 minutes to run, uh, but if you will use uh, the memory optimizer, it will take you with the same uh, V cores, it will take you maybe three minutes to run the whole data flow. So that depends on what type of activities you are using and if memory optimize works better for you or general purpose. So look into the activities uh, if you're using lookup, uh, some sorting, you know, some other transfer type of activities which need uh, some more memory to run, uh, then uh, you might want to choose the memory optimizer and uh, give us uh, some uh, weak cores. Uh, but remember, the rate for the general purpose is 0.274 uh, 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 dollars per hour per week core. And for memory optimizers, I believe 0.374 or something. Uh, so there is a difference of 10 cents of per week core per hour between uh, these two settings. Uh, so, but if you use the memory optimization and it completes quickly, then you probably save the money. So I want to just suggest you check which settings you are using and uh, see which activity is playing role. And then you want to play with this and select the best out of these. And uh, then, uh, you know, run it and uh, test again and see which one uh, is actually more um, reasonable and also save you some money. So it depends again, you know, if your general purpose runs for two hours, you know, pay some money for that. And uh, if your memory optimized, maybe run in 30 minutes, the same uh, uh, data load. So that, then uh, you might probably go with memory optimizer and they pay less uh, instead of just, uh, you know, using general purpose and keep running forever. Okay. So the next step is, uh, I, I actually was thinking something different uh, and uh, I was uh, thinking about copy activity and all that. So ignore the number five because uh, you, I was thinking that maybe you have used self-hosted IR and you need to check the version. But uh, we are not using self-hosted IR because uh, Dataflow does not support self-hosted IR. So this uh, just ignore number five, you know, and uh, there is no need to check the IR version. But if uh, I was thinking if I, I might be totally lost, like I was thinking about copy activity where you use self hosted IRs and all. Okay, you don't use uh, self-hosted uh, uh, IRs in data flow and there is no need to check the version. So let's go with number six. Uh, check with the MS uh, if any issue going on. That's very important. Uh, so let's say you have a data flow and uh, that runs in 10 minutes uh, with the same size of the file, uh, no issue on the destination and all of a sudden now it is taking 30 minutes. Uh, so you might want to go ahead and create a ticket with Microsoft and say like, hey, um, can you please take a look at what's going on with the data flow because it was running in 10 minutes, now it is running in 30 minutes. And do not uh, just uh, struggle with the your end uh, because uh, sometime if you are struggling with your end and your pipelines are taking more time and the issues on Microsoft, you are not reporting it, uh, then you are paying more money. Microsoft is not coming back and telling you like, hey, uh, you know, your data flows uh, took uh, 30 extra minutes uh, and it was an uh, issue on our end. Uh, and uh, if you, you you need to go back and tell them, hey, my uh, pipeline has been running in 10 to 20 minutes. Now they're running in two hours. And the uh, last time they ran, ran with the same data, data load with two hours, uh, you know, there is something issue going on. So you can at least ask them money back, you know, because uh, uh, this can be costly process. Uh, you are running hundreds of pipelines and data flows and that can add up to the large amount of money. So you don't want to hold on to it like, hey, let me figure out for two days. Maybe there is a problem with my pipelines and all that. Everything is running on the Microsoft uh, 
uh, equipment. So let's say they're running these data flows, they are uh, running on the Databricks uh, Spark clusters. So you are using uh, the equipment from the Microsoft, uh, doesn't matter they are using from some other company or not. Under the, you have direct contact with Microsoft and ask them, hey, uh, let me know what is going on with my data, data flow execution because data flow execution is uh, uh, running uh, for a long time. Also, uh, there could be possibility your data flow gets stuck somewhere and uh, instead of taking uh, 10 minutes, it's stuck for 24 hours and uh, then you figure out like, oh, okay, my data flow got stuck. Uh, that's not your issue. Uh, you. Uh, are using Microsoft uh, product and if it is stuck uh, it had been running for 10 minutes uh, now it is stuck for 24 hours so that could be some problem on go on going under the hood the Microsoft might have deployed some code or uh, they made some changes you know that played a role to make your data flow stuck uh, so create a ticket with them right away and ask them what's going on so they can take a look uh, and then also you can ask uh, the money reimbursement uh, because you don't want to pay for 24 hour data flow if it was stuck because of the Microsoft uh, issue going on under the hood uh, that you are not aware of. So I hope uh, these uh, few of the, uh, there could be a lot more going on, you know, because data flow is a fully completed uh, um, ETL part of where you use a lot of activities and there could be, uh, you know, issue can be with the single activity, not with the entire data flow. So I will suggest you take a look on each of the activity you have used inside the data flow and make sure each one is performing according to some standards or according to your expectation. If not, uh, then, uh, you know, dig into it. And uh, if they still you feel, face the issue, contact Microsoft and try to get help. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe my channel and I will see you guys in the next video.